Welcome. In this video, we'll be looking at derivative rules. And in particular, we'll try to understand how the rates of change depend on the rates of the quantities used to construct our total. We'll discover that there are derivative rules for sums and differences, for constant multiples, for products, for quotients, and it later we'll learn about compositions or chains. Let's start by considering the case where a quantity is the sum of two different quantities. So here I have two individuals adding water to a bowl. Notice that they're pouring at different rates. If I look at the total, I can imagine that it's made up of components coming from each of the individual's contributions. In other words, the total amount of water is the sum of the water added by each individual. So, let's let t of t be the total water in the bowl at time t, and l of t will be the water added in the left bowl, and r of t will be the water added in the right bowl. Then if we think of the t as the sum of the, the two other functions, and we think how fast is water being added to the bowl? The rate of water being added to the bowl is just the sum of how fast the two individuals were adding the water. That is, the, the rate of change of a sum is the sum of the rates of change. This will be true for differences as well. Our second rule is the scaling rule, or the constant multiple rule. So, so imagine that I wanted to look at how much water in two different ways. One might be measuring how much water is in the bowl measured in cups. Or I might also be interested in how much water is in the bowl based on how much mass of water there is. So let V of t be the total volume of water measured in cups, and M of t be the amount of water measured in mass, or grams. One cup of water weighs 236.59 grams. Consequently, there's a relationship. It's a scaling relationship that the total mass of water is just a multiple of the volume. You multiply by the scaling factor, 236.59. Now, if I were to measure a derivative, that corresponds to the slope of the graph. And so at time 20 seconds, my volume of water in my bowl is changing at a rate of 0.55 cups per second. I could go and look at the rate of change of my mass. It also has a slope at time 20. My mass is increasing at a rate of 130.1245 grams per second. And of course, there's a relationship between these two rates of change. The graphs are the same, they've just been scaled. Consequently, the rates of change is just a scale of the other rate of change. My mass's rate of change is 236.59 times the volume rate of change. And in fact, the, the units make sense as well. The rate of change of mass would be grams per second. The rate of change of volume would be cups per second. And the factor, 236.59, is grams per cup. And so the units simplify just as we would need. This gives us our constant multiple rule. If I'm interested in the rate of change of a constant times a function, that rate is the same constant times the rate of change of the original function. In preparation for the product rule, let's now consider the case where a quantity is the product of two different quantities. So, this morning I had some pancakes, and I want you to imagine I can change how much Nutella I add per pancake. I might add a lot per pancake, or I might add a little. In addition, I might eat just a few pancakes, or I might eat a lot of pancakes. Now, the total amount of Nutella that I eat 
is a product. It's the amount of Nutella I put on per pancake times the number of pancakes that I eat. And so if I imagine day after day I eat pancakes and day after day I eat Nutella on my pancakes, and here notice that the amount of Nutella I'm adding per pancake is going up and the number of pancakes I'm eating is going down, then the total amount of Nutella is the product of these two functions. And so here's a graph of my total Nutella consumed. Let's look at the rates of change. At time 20, on the 20th day, the number of, the amount of Nutella I'm eating per pancake is increasing at a rate of 0 0.325 I don't know what units I used. And uh, the number of pancakes is decreasing at a rate of 0.173. And I might consider, well, how fast is the rate of change, or what is the rate of change of the total amount of Nutella I'm consuming? Well, if I look at it, we discover it's negative 0.0645. And it's important to note, that's not the product of my other rates. If I were to multiply 0.325 times 0.173, I actually get a value of 0.0562. And so we discover that the product does not obey the rule we might expect. And this should make sense because the units wouldn't make sense either. If I thought about my total Nutella consumed, that might be in grams, for example. And so the rate of change of grams per day could not equal the grams per pancake per day times the number of pancakes per day. Um, I would get the wrong units. In fact, I get days squared in the denominator. Something's wrong about that. So let's see if we can discover what the right way to do this is. We go back to the definition of the derivative. The definition of the derivative says we're going to calculate the amount of Nutella at a second time minus the amount of Nutella at the beginning and divide by how much time has elapsed. And then we take a limit as the time elapsed goes to zero. So I've got an orange rectangle and a blue rectangle. And the blue rectangle represents the er is an area, n times p, so that's the total amount of Nutella initially. The orange rectangle that's hidden behind is the amount of, of Nutella total at the end. And so I've broken it down into some parts. Notice that my new amount of Nutella per pancake is n plus delta n, and the new number of pancakes that I'm eating is p plus delta p. So the total amount of Nutella at the end is the product of n plus delta n times p plus delta p. When I expand this out, Notice that when I FOIL it, the n times p in my product cancels the n times p of my initial Nutella. And so I end up with only three terms in the numerator, which correspond to the three subsections of the orange rectangle that we can see. There's n times the change in p. That's the rectangle at the top left. I've got delta n times p. That's the rectangle at the far right. And delta n times delta p that's the small rectangle in the top right. Those are the three contributions of change. When I simplify this and group them as three different terms, I see difference quotients appearing that when I take a limit, I'll get derivatives. And so the rate of change of the total is the Nutella amount per pancake times the rate of change of my pancake eating plus the rate of change of my using Nutella, times the number of pancakes. And then I have a product of the rates times zero, which cancel. And so I get a product rule that the derivative of t is n times the derivative of p plus the derivative of n times p. And our summary of the product rule is the derivative of a product is the first derivative times the derivative of the last plus the last times the derivative of the first, or first d last plus last d first. That's a much more fun way to say it.
We finish by looking at the quotient rule. Let's take the quantity that we just looked at, the total amount of Nutella that has been eaten. And we know that the total amount of Nutella is the amount of Nutella per pancake times the number of pancakes. And we found that from the product rule, the rate of change of the total can be written as a sum of products given the rates of the individual functions. Well, if I take the equation t equals np and I solve for the amount of Nutella per pancake, I get a ratio. The amount of Nutella per pancake is equal to the total amount of Nutella consumed divided by the amount of pancakes. So if I'm interested in finding the rate of change of the Nutella per pancake, I could go about solving for the rate that's in my original equation. So let's solve for dn dt. If I subtract n times dp dt and then divide by p, I get the equation for the rate of change of my Nutella per pancake. So I don't want to have n in the equation, or I'd like to write it in terms of t and p. So let's change n using our formula, n equals t over p. And now it's not so good to have fractions inside of fractions. So let's multiply the numerator and denominator both by p, and that'll allow us to rewrite our equation. The rate of change of my Nutella per pancake equals the, the quotient, where I have p times dt dt minus t times dp dt all over p squared. And this is the quotient rule. The quotient rule says that when you have the derivative of a quotient, you take the function on the bottom, the denominator, I'll call it low, times the derivative of the numerator, let's call that high, so I get low d high minus high d low over low low. And honestly, I like to sing this. It goes like this. Low d high minus high d low over low low. And that's how you find the derivative of a quotient. So, there you have it. We have rates of change found using the rates of change of components used to construct our formula.